let's study a different kind of motion, a motion that is not uniform motion, is not constant velocity motion. So what I have here is again a rider uh, riding on an air track. But what I've done now is that the air track has is tilted. So the right side of the air track is lower than the left side. So you'll see what kind of motion we get now. Now, why is this not constant velocity motion? Well, as you can see here, the distance between the blue points, which uh, mark the location of the rider every 0.4 seconds, that distance between those blue points is bigger at the beginning and is much smaller towards the top side of the track, the left side of the screen. So that is indicating that the velocity uh, of the rider is bigger at the beginning and less uh, towards the left side of the screen. So that velocity is not constant. Now you might start thinking, well, what if the velocity is not constant? How can we actually define it? Because if you remember, we defined velocity as being the slope of the position versus time plot. If, you take, if we take a look at the position versus time plot for this motion, you'll see that it is in a straight line, as you would expect. This is uh, some sort of parabola. And uh, having defined the velocity as the slope of the position versus time uh, plot doesn't help us to think about the velocity for this kind of motion that is not uniform motion. So what, uh, what could be the solution for this problem? Well, if you notice, um, when you look at the position versus time between two points, you see that it is a very good approximation to think of the motion of the object between those two points as being a uh, uniform motion because it is the a plot kind of looks like a straight line between if two points are close enough together so that gives us uh, some hope that we can actually use the definition of velocity as being the slope of the position versus time plot we can use that definition to uh, talk about the uh, velocity at different points along the trajectory of the object. So let's see how, how we can do that. So let's choose these two points. I'm going to call one A and the other one B, so the corresponding times TA and TB. And as we said before, uh, the um, plot of position versus time between A and B, if A and B are close enough, does look a lot like a straight line. So if that is a straight line, or if we can approximate it as a straight line, then we can talk about the velocity of the object between A and B as being the slope of the line that connects A and B. Now this isn't really the velocity of the object because we know that the object is not moving with constant velocity. It is an approximation. So we're going to call that velocity, uh, we're going to call it the average velocity, and we can calculate that average velocity by using the definition of velocity that we used before, meaning uh, using xA and xB and TA and TB, taking the difference between xB and xA divided by the difference between TB and TA. And we will call this average velocity, as I said before, because it isn't the actual velocity of the object. We haven't yet defined what exactly it means uh, when we say the velocity of the object. Um, we're just using an approximation, thinking of taking small intervals of time and thinking or approximating the motion of the object as if it was constant velocity motion. The definition that we have used for velocity involves taking the difference in the positions of the object at two different uh, times divided by the difference in time. Now when the object is not moving with constant velocity we will call this the average velocity between A and B. Graphically that average velocity between A and B corresponds to the slope of the line that connects A and B. So the actual uh, position as a function of time of the object is the white line, the curved white line, but we are approximating that motion with a straight line that goes from A to B. 
Now you might think, well, that is not really the velocity of the object. At, actually, at any point between T A and T B, the object uh, didn't have that precise exact velocity. It is just an approximation. Can we do better than that? Can we obtain a value of the velocity of the object that is more precise? Well, the answer is yes, we can do that. And the way we would do that is by taking two other points, let's say A prime and B prime, one in green, and uh, those two points, since they are closer to the actual time that we're interested in finding the velocity, well, they will give us a what would think would be a more precise value of the velocity of the object at a specific time t. So using those two points, we again uh, calculate the average velocity between a prime and b prime, compute that number, and of course we can continue to get more and more precise values for the velocity if we take two points closer to t now, and take two points even closer to t, you can tell that uh, if we continue to do this, we are uh, obtaining a line, a straight line, whose slope has a value that uh, becomes uh, unique. The limit when of the average velocity between points A and B, when A and B go to a, together towards uh, sandwich uh, the time t, that limit is unique. You will get a number uh, that is unique. And we call that number the instantaneous velocity at time t. So using uh, the definition of velocity as being the slope of the position versus time plot for uniform motion, we have been able to uh, modify that definition to take care of a more general class of, of motions which do not which do not have constant velocity. So using this uh, this uh, procedure, we can define the instantaneous velocity of an object at a particular point in time. As you can see, when you take this procedure to the limit, you will end up with a straight line that is tangent to the curve at that particular time t. The slope of that tangent line is what we say was the instantaneous velocity at that time. For general motion, uh, for a position versus time plot look, that looks like the blue line, uh, we can draw tangent lines at different points. One of them is at time t1, the other one's at time t2, and the other one is at time t3. And those tangent lines, the slope of, of them, tells us the velocity, instantaneous velocity of the object at that particular time. At t1, the slope of that line. At t2, the slope of its tangent line. And at t3, the slope of the tangent line gives us the velocity at that time. So what we've said is that for motion that is not uniform, for non-uniform motion, we can extend the definition of velocity uh, first by using the average velocity between two points, which we say was an approximation. We are approximating the motion of the object between those two points as if it was a constant velocity motion. But uh, we can take this uh, definition further and actually obtain a unique value for the velocity of an object at an instant of time t. We basically take the average velocity for two points, calculate between two points that are on both sides of the point of interest, time t, and we uh, take the limit when the these two points a and b tend or, or move towards t. The ratio between delta x and delta t in that limit uh, is what we call the instantaneous velocity. There is a shorthand notation for all this uh, procedure of taking the limit and taking the ratio between delta x and delta t. The shorthand notation is dx dt at time t.